Turn to Proverbs 7.27. Finally to the end of Proverbs 7. And we'll be shifting gears entirely next week for a while, which should be interesting, I think. Proverbs chapter 8 will be, should be some interesting stuff. Okay, 727. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. So we already looked at 26, that she's cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. So when you walk in that house, you're walking into a very bad place. Her house is the gateway to sin. We saw in verse 8, it says of this young man passing through the street near her corner, he, <clears throat> excuse me, he went the way to her house. And look what happens when she invites him into her house. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves for the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. Okay, so number one, they're not married, so it'd be fornication at the very least, but then she says the good man's not home. That means it's adultery and fornication. So her house is the gateway to sin. And what do we know from Romans 6, 23, famous verse, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you sin, you deserve death. And that's what this young man is heading for. Now, sin not only causes physical death, but it also causes eternal punishment in hell, which is the second death. Now, we looked at um, uh, Revelation 20, 14 and 15 in the last verse that we looked at. But if you look at verse 10, if we read verse 10 of that same chapter, Revelation 20 and verse 10, we'll see that the second death um, is more than just, it's it's not a non-existence like some heretics think. The second death is torment, it's punishment, it's everlasting punishment and suffering. Revelation 20 and verse 10, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then down in the last two verses of the chapter, it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So the second death is an experience of torment, of pain and suffering. And it's not just for the devil and his angels. In Matthew 25 and verse 46, it says of the wicked that these shall go away into everlasting punishment. And punishment is pain and suffering. So they get the same thing. Um, he says, depart, into, uh, depart from me, cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels there in Matthew 25, 41, I think it is. So the devil and his angels get the same thing as the wicked get. They all get the same thing. Pain and suffering in the lake of fire. The world tells <clears throat> us, for one thing, it tells us, well, if I'm going to go to hell, a lot of my friends are going to be there with me. Yeah. And another thing it tells us is that uh, sinning is heaven. Yeah. You know, when I was pretty young, there was a song that used to say that the chorus was heaven's just a sin away. Mm. Wow. Oh, that's, yeah, that's just a song. Do you remember that? No, it was Charlie Pride. No, it wasn't Charlie Pride. It was a just a sin away. It was a country song. Have you heard that? Yeah, no, uh, I don't know. But. It was a man and his daughter. Oh, yeah. a man and you his daughter. You mean singing it? Yes. Oh, oh. exactly. Yeah, they should have. First hit. They should have said hell is just a sin away, yeah. <laughs> not heaven. Yeah. Mm. It was about a love affair, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's something to say about the yeah. love affair. It was about adultery. adulterous affair. Yeah. Yeah. People are utterly foolish. They're right. Their friends are going to be there, but they ain't going to be your friends when yeah, you get there. Friends. They're going to hate you mm-hmm. as bad as they've hated anybody. <clears throat> so the strange woman is heading towards hell. <clears throat> Her house is the way to hell. And she's not going by herself. She's going to take whoremongers, whoremongers with her. Because we're told in uh, Hebrews 13, 4, which we've looked at many times, that marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. And we already looked at Revelation 21, 8, which says that whoremongers have their part in the lake of fire. 
And then also in Revelation 22, 15, which is one we didn't look at in the last verse, likewise tells us <clears throat> that whoremongers have their part in the lake of fire. Revelation 22:15 says, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. This is without the gates of the holy city people that are in the lake of fire. So if men and women want to have assurance of eternal life, they better flee from whoredom, because if you're practicing whoredom, you don't have any assurance of eternal life. 1 Corinthians 6.18 just says, flee fornication. And then it goes on to tell you why, because it's a sin against your own body, <clears throat> different than any other sin. But very simple, very short, flee fornication. It even has some alliteration there with the two Fs that everybody should be able to memorize and remember. The horse house is also the way to hell on earth. Her house is the way to hell, not just to the center of the earth, but on earth. Because hell is a place of destruction. Matthew 10 and verse 28, Jesus said that soul and body gets destroyed in hell. Now he's talking about hell in the center of the earth, hell in the lake of fire. But my point here is that hell is a place of destruction. Matthew 10 and verse 28. It says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So soul and body gets destroyed in hell. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to punish the wicked with everlasting destruction. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 9. <clears throat> He's going to come in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. 2 Thessalonians, yep, yeah, one nine. So hell is a place of destruction. And I can't, every time I think about hell, every time I think about the lake of fire, of course I think about that heresy of annihilation mm. that I dealt with. And if you just think about it, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction? If you are destroyed, if the destruction is everlasting, that means the destruction is ongoing, right? It's not just a, a one-time event or something like that. So hell's a place of destruction. And remember what it says, what it said there in uh, Proverbs 6.32, that the man that commits adultery destroys his own soul. Proverbs 6.32, But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Now this is not talking about, at least in the immediate, it's not talking about hell, like the center of the earth. Right. This is talking about the, a destruction of your own soul that happens while you're alive. It's a ruining. See, destruction doesn't mean annihilation. Destruction means to ruin. Like if you destroy a building, it's like you pull its pieces apart and you just it's just a pile of rubble. It's all there. The pieces are still there. Everything that the building once was has just been totally rearranged and made into something that is useless. But it's, the parts are still there. Well, if you commit adultery with a woman... All your, you're still alive, you're still breathing, all your parts are still here, but you have ruined your inward man. You have ruined the person that you used to be. Now this also includes destroying one's life, like having hell on earth, like destroying one's honor. Remember Proverbs 5, 9, lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Destroying one's wealth in verse 10, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And destroying one's health, verse 11, and thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, which is another word for destroy. So yes, the, the man that goes into the strange woman is heading to hell on earth. And we, we even use that phrase, don't we today? Hell on earth, right? It was a living hell, right? He's going, he's going to go through a living hell and there's pretty good probability that if he's doing those kind of things, he's going to go on to an eternal hell as well. 
Now, the strange woman also represents false religion in the Bible. If you turn to Revelation 17, 1 through 5, the Lord here describes this monstrous religious system as a harlot, which is a strange woman. Revelation 17, 1 through 5, it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So, a strange woman. Only we're talking, spiritually speaking here, we're talking about an organization. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been drunk, have been uh, made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. This woman, at least, is uh, in large part the Roman Catholic Church. I don't think it's totally limited to the Roman Catholic Church, but it fits this to a T. Drunk with the blood of the saints, um, she, she killed a lot of martyrs full of names of blasphemy, like Mary, Mother of God, and calling the Pope the Holy Father, and things like that. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones. You ever been in in a uh, Catholic cathedral? Mm -hmm. All the gold, all the precious stones, all the nice vestures, and all those things. And I'm sure, yeah, the Vatican's Mm got to be over the top. I've never seen it, but have you you've seen it? Yeah. 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 I mean, it it fits that description to a T. having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth. So the strange woman is representative of false religion, which makes a lot of sense because God charged Israel with fornication and whoredom when they would go after other gods. So it makes sense why the strange woman represents false religion. Uh, Proverbs nine, thirteen through seventeen, which we'll get to here in a while, ref- is talking about a foolish woman, um, which is uh, a strange woman. And it says a foolish woman is clamorous; she's loud, noisy, shouting. She is simple; she's stupid, in other words, and knoweth nothing; she's ignorant, for she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. So here is another is a is a false religious system being described and personified as a woman, a foolish woman, as opposed to the wi- wisdom, which is personified as a godly woman. Now, idolatrous religion, like I said, is described as whoredom in the Bible. I'll just give you a verse in Exodus 34 and verse 15. Exodus 34, 15. The Lord says, Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, speaking to Israel before they went into the promised land, where the Canaanites were, and they go a-whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. So, practicing false religion is going a-whoring after other gods. It is being unfaithful to your own god. Remember, God, even in the Old Testament, said that he was married to Israel and Judah, and he put Israel and Judah, he put Israel away first, gave her a writing of divorcement, and he was ready to do the same thing with Judah. We're called the bride of Christ in the New Testament, right? So, it makes... A lot of sense that it, if you practice false religion, you're going a whoring after other gods because you're being unfaithful to your own God, who we are, whom we are espoused to. Now, the foolish woman, the strange woman's guests, which would be like the people that goes to her house of worship, right? Isn't that what they call a church? False churches, true churches, they call them houses of worship. It says her house is the way to hell. Well, the strange woman's house is full of guests that are in the depths of hell. Let's look at that next verse there in Proverbs 9 and verse 18. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. 
So if men and women want to have assurance of eternal life, they better flee idolatry and false religion. Just like if you want to have assurance of eternal life, you flee fornication and adultery like we looked at in 1 Corinthians 6.18. Well, if you want to have assurance, you also flee spiritual fornication, which is idolatry, which is what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 10.14. This is why it's so important to hold fast to the truth. <clears throat> because in holding fast to the truth, you have assurance that you're a child of God. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 14 says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee idolatry. Flee from idolatry. There's a few places where the Bible says to flee. Flee fornication, flee idolatry, flee youthful lusts, and flee the love of money. He says, Thou man of God, flee these things. Speaking of the love of money. There's a few things that you don't fight. You just have to flee because they're too tempting to try to fight. And then the last phrase of this chapter, going down to the chambers of death. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. So this tells us that the strange woman is heading toward death. In Proverbs chapter 2, which we already looked at, it says that her house inclineth unto death. Proverbs 2 and verse 18. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. In other words, she's heading, her road is heading to the chambers of death, and anybody that walks on them following her is going in the same direction. Her house goes down to the chambers of death, which means the grave. Proverbs 7.27, which is the verse we're looking at. Um, a chamber is a room or apartment in a house, usually one appropriated to the use of one person, a private room, in latter use, especially a sleeping apartment or uh, and a, a bedroom. So a chamber is a place you sleep, going down to the chambers of death. That's where the dead sleep. They go to the grave and they sleep. Their bodies sleep. Their souls and their spirits don't sleep. They either go to heaven or hell, but their bodies go there to rest for a while. So her guests are going down to the chambers of hell. They're going to have a dirt nap. And she's going to take those lovers with her. Or she's going down to the chambers of death and she's going to take her lovers with her. Uh, we saw in Proverbs 5.23 that the man that goes into a strange woman has a death wish. It says, He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. We're told in Proverbs 2.19 that none that go unto her return again. Remember that verse? Proverbs 2.19 None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. They might not ever leave the house, or if they do, they are not going to leave the same man as they went in as. Because they're going to have destroyed their own soul, as we've already seen. Remember the previous verse that we looked at? Many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And, as we've already seen, following the strange woman can lead to death in many different ways. You could die of an STD, right? Lest thy flesh and thy body be consumed, Proverbs 5.11. Her husband could kill you, Proverbs 6.34. Jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not rest content, though thou givest many gifts. God could kill you for your sin. Proverbs 6.23, the wages of sin is death. You remember Ananias and Sapphira? Acts chapter 5, 4 through 5, they lied to the Holy Ghost, and Ananias fell down dead. Right there, he gave up the ghost. Um, there was a guy named um, Uzzah who touched the ark, which was a sin. God killed him. There was another guy named um, Ur. Ur? Yeah, E-R. I think it was his name. Ur. He was the brother of Onan. He was the son of Judah. It just simply says, Ur was wicked and the Lord slew him, or the Lord killed him. You remember that back in it's Genesis 30-something, I think it is. Um, but yeah, he was just wicked and God killed him. Uh, Nadab and Abihu offered strange fire. The Lord fired them. You know, the Lord kills people for sin. And then lastly, as I mentioned earlier, I told you I'd give it the verses. You could also go down to the chambers of death if you are a Christian in a true church, because you'll be excluded from the church, which is a death to fellowship in the church with the Lord and his people. Look at Romans 1 and verse 29. 
Now, of course, a reprobate hearing this, this would mean nothing, like uh, death of fellowship in the church, who cares? But to a child of God in the church, that should be a fearful thing, to be put out of the church and to not have a place at the Lord's table. That should be a dreadful thing. Romans 1.29 it says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. I just wanted that one word there, fornication. So we're talking about fornicators among a bunch of other sinners. And it says of them in verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, like fornication. They that commit fornication are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Not only do these sinners do these things, they, offer, they also have pleasure in other people that do them. And that's just as wicked as doing it yourself if you have pleasure in sin. And just to show you that the death, of course the death, the wages of sin is death, so I mean this, you'd be worthy of eternal death as well, but by comparative scripture we see that people that commit these things are also worthy of death to fellowship with God temporally, and a good verse that illustrates this is Luke fifteen twenty four, which ref- speaks of the prodigal son, who was a son of his father, who got his inheritance early, who went and squandered it with riotous living, probably with hookers, and ends up being dead to his father. Though he was still physically alive, he was dead to his father. He didn't have fellowship with his father anymore, and it's a good picture of death to fellowship. His father said when his son finally came to himself and came back, he says, For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. So, the person that goes to the strange woman indeed does go to the chambers of death. Whether it's death in the church, whether it's physical death, whether it's just a death of destroying yourself from the inside out to where you have ruined your life, whether it's a death in the lake of fire, Um, One way or another, uh, the person is going to experience a death of sorts and possibly several of them. So, the moral of the story is, stay away from the strange woman because there will be severe judgment to